The way the world's managing food waste today is a very significant problem, and I was shocked to learn that 8% of emissions that are damaging the environment are coming from the way we're handling food waste. Olympia, you created GoTerra to solve this climate crisis, this part of it related to food waste. What are the elements of the system that make it happen? GoTerra exists to mitigate the climate crisis. So our, our mission is to participate in actively reducing GHG emissions in a meaningful way. Um, our team knows how many years, months and days we have left um, in this decisive decade. We accept food waste in the receival skid. So we accept the waste, we process it and we manage it and we get it ready to be fed to the insects. And then the robotic system is fully autonomous. So every day it is drawing from that receival tank and feeding the insects inside the robotic system. So when, when you go inside the robot, it is managing the environment and it's managing the insects within the unit. So making sure that they've got excellent environmental controls, but also that every day they're moved from their place in the racking, taken up to, to get fed and then put back to their place. Because it's the essentially a 10 day cycle to move through the system. Correct. Yeah. We're leveraging that the biology of the insects. So the, the larval stage of this insect species is fairly long and they are very, voracious consumers. So if we capture them at this sort of from five days of age through to the sort of 15 days of age, then we've caught them at the time where they're consuming the most amount of waste. And so you, they're the most efficient to do this job. And they're prepared to consume any kind of food waste in that 10 days yeah. and whatever you feed them. Correct. Yeah, they will consume because we're when we process it, we are it's sort of this wonderful blend of like industrial uh, systems, robotics, and then this biological and chemical piece that nature's doing on her own, but we've kind of locked up into this uh, deployable system. And then the output of the robotic system is fertilizer and animal feed, which you're then marketing on commodities marketplaces. We recognize what we are. We, we produce a service for our customers to manage a waste stream. So we're infrastructure. And then the offtake from that is a farming commodity that goes back into agriculture. So we sell it where the customers for those products are. One of the concerns has got to be that there is a perception out there that flies are going to be transmitting a whole lot of disease and maggots are not a healthy thing to have around. Yeah. And you're creating them and managing them by the millions, <laughs> billions potentially. Billions. How do you get people over that concern? Yeah, there's two things. First, the fly that we're using at the moment is a black soldier fly. And so it's highly suited to commercial outcomes. It's a non-vector, so it does not uh, pass on pathogens or uh, bacteria because it's unable to do so in the way that it consumes waste. Second part is that we've moved to a place in our society where our social license is lining up with our political will. And so people actually now are more focused on how they can actually do better in the world. And funnily enough, because of that and they know that the insects are going back to agriculture they're far more interested in that connection than they are in with the maggots yeah. and people I say are that, prepared to invest the time to learn about how the system yeah. is really working yeah because they care and not immediately say oh well, this is, sounds like a bad idea that's right the architecture that you've created I think is also very interesting a hub and spoke model to make this work at a municipal level or campus level or even bigger scale level what was the rationale in creating the architecture that way yeah I think again it's just trying to continue to just dial these logistics down as far as we can. We realized if we could create these uh, hub and spoke models, then we could not only create uh, opportunity that decentralized, but now we could start with some of our customers and help them use their backhaul and um, centralize uh, near their distribution centers. Olympia, why did you participate in the KPMG Global Tech Innovator Competition. There's two things that GoTerra cares about um, when it thinks about itself as a leader in the ag tech space. And, and those two things are mitigating the climate crisis. And part of being a participant in doing that is talking about it in as many open forums with as much media attention as you can possibly achieve. And the other one is about women in tech. As a solo female founder, I think one of the most important things to me is that I'm standing up and making sure that other women know that it's possible. And so I feel truly privileged to have raised two rounds of funding and have the opportunity to even put my tech out into the world. And so if I'm going to be able to have a platform and, and I can, and there are events out in the world where I can stand up and, and show other women that it is absolutely possible for you to draw a robot on a napkin when you're not an engineer. And um, if that idea has merit, 
and customers that want it and the technology is fit for purpose, that, that there is money and there are VCs who are interested in, in backing great ideas, no matter the gender of the founder who created them. And, um, and hopefully by standing up and, and, and being present in events like this, I can inspire other women to sit down at the kitchen table and draw their idea on a piece of paper and get someone to make it true.